Okay. Om Magyana Tumarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Vancha Kaupata Rubyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhai Eva Excuse me. Patita nam pavane bio vaishna vibyo namo nama. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare all right, so welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Bhakti Vaibhav, and we're in the second canto, and today we're beginning chapter number two. So I'll share the screen. Is everyone able to see the PowerPoint? Yes, my love. Yes, my love. Are you seeing it okay? Yeah? Um, now we are not able to see it, Maharaj. Huh? Now we are not able to see it. Oh, really? Okay, let me go back. What happened? Do you see it now? We were able to see it for two, three brief seconds, Maharaj, and then we are not able to see that. What happened? Oh my goodness. I'm
महाराज जी सर इट हेज स्टार्टेड महाराज यू आर ऑन म्यूट हम Okay, can you see it? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. All right. So, connection with the previous chapter. Remember, we were hearing about the Virata Rup in the previous chapter. Sukadeva Goswami, oh Sutta Goswami, <laughs> Sutta Goswami continues the narration, inspired by Shonaka Rishi's eagerness. Sutta Goswami continues the narration. Maharaj Parikshit, the son of Uttara, after hearing the speeches of Srila Sukadeva Goswami, which were all about the truth of the Self, applied his concentration faithfully upon Lord Krishna. Right? So this is the first verse in the chapter. <laughs> Maharaj, your video is not visible. All right, so the chapter begins like this with a statement by Sukadeva Goswami and he talks about how Lord Brahma at the beginning of the creation, he forgot how to use his creative potency. He became forgetful. Just like all of us, sometimes we become forgetful things we're supposed to do. Sometimes, you know, maybe you're, you're singing a, a bhajan or some prayer or something, and you know it, but somehow you just, somehow it just slips your mind, you, because our, our minds wander. Because of our inattentiveness, we can easily forget. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, Maharaj. So, even Lord Brahma is like that. He's also a conditioned soul and he forgets. So, how to overcome this forgetfulness? What is the remedy? What are we meant to do to overcome this forgetfulness? Yes? What do you say? So many learned devotees are there. We will ask you, how do you overcome your forgetfulness? Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. So we yes. pray to Paramatma to enlighten us so that we can uh, get the, uh, our, our memory improves and be able to remember at the right time. At the right what, time. Do, what do you say, Diksha Ahuja Mataji? How you, Krishna, yes, how do you overcome forgetfulness? Maharaj, uh, generally I apply small, small tips sometimes when I uh, I put an alarm. Sometimes if I can put an alarm after 5 or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, I will just speak one Hare Krishna Mahamantra. If I, if I forget, the, if I'm chanting one prayer, 
so i will try to meditate on the meaning of the prayer so it helps me to remember krishna so okay so that's your technique lord brahma we're told he did vaya vasaya buddhi and Prabhupada refers to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text 41. Who remembers that verse? 241, Bhagavad Gita? Yes? Yes? Who's going to tell me this verse? You've all finished Bhakti Shastri. You should know these verses. Well, several people spoke at once. Could we have one person put their hand up or something and then we can ask them to speak? Yes, all right, here's a hand up. Diksha Ahuja Mataji has got her hand up. Please tell us the verse. Yes, can you give me the translation? Maharaj, uh, it says Vyavasatmika Buddhir Ekaha Kurunandana. One should uh, worship Lord with one pointed attention. And Bahushakaya uh, Nantasha Buddhir Yog Avyasinam. One who is uh, one who thinks multi branched, his, uh, his intelligence is not fixed. Yeah. yeah, we often find Indian devotees like this. They know the Sanskrit very well. Whenever you ask them to give the English, whew, they have their own limitations. With Sanskrit, it's very easy. But if we ask them to memorize the English, it's very difficult. I guess be because the Sanskrit is closer to your own language. Right? And Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, those who are on this path are resolute in determination, and their aim is one, O beloved child of the Kurus. The intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. So you had the meaning right. It was just you had your own way of presenting it. So thank you for that. Yes. Okay. So Lord Brahma, even even in the position of Lord Brahma, sometimes he become forgetful. So Sukadeva Goswami gives us as an example to talk about meditation on the Virata Rup. That Lord Brahma overcame his forgetfulness by meditating on the Virata Roop. And in this way he regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. And he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. All right, so this is how, uh, this is a connection from the previous chapter. In the first chapter, Sukadeva Goswami had introduced this uh, idea of meditating on the Virata Roop meditating on the universal form. So, okay, we'll go ahead. This is the first verse. Here's the breakdown of the chapter. So we begin with the connection with the previous chapter. And then the first section, or we would say second section, verses 3 to 7 are going to talk about detachment because Sukadeva Goswami is going to speak about the need for renunciation. Renunciation, right? We come to Krishna consciousness. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada would say that uh, we're declaring war on Maya. Did you have that idea when you came into Krishna consciousness? You want to declare war on... No? Really? Oh my goodness. What was your desire in coming to Krishna consciousness? 
No, we come, we should have that desire, disgusted with the material world, and we are declaring war on the material energy. So we come to Krishna consciousness to get away from all this attachment of sense gratification, which people are so absorbed in. So Sukadeva Goswami is going to speak about this detachment in the world of names. The world of names, you know, different names. Names are important, right? You have, oh, I have the, I have the Benz, or I have a BMW, or I have the Mitsubishi, or I have the whatever fashion, you know, who, where did you go to buy this? Oh, I got from the, you know, the, the big, mall, the most expensive mall in the city, and oh, and somebody has a Rolex wristwatch, and somebody has the diamonds and jewels and everything. So, the world of names. We're trying to get away from these things. This Sukadev Goswami, he's going to speak about this to Maharaj Parikshit because he wants him to renounce. I mean, he's not got long to live. But definitely, if you only have seven days to live, you want to renounce. You want, you don't want to have the thought of, oh, sense, oh, I want more sense gratification. We have to detach ourselves from the material world. So Sukadeva Goswami is going to encourage Maharaj Parikshit to cultivate detachment. And then he's going to take the meditation which he was teaching before, before he was teaching meditation on the Bharata Rup. In this chapter, he's going to take it a bit higher and he's going to speak about meditation on the super soul. Meditation on the super soul. We'll hear about the super soul and how to meditate on the super soul. And this will be explained more in this chapter. Prabhupada also will give, there's a big purport where Prabhupada explains how we can actually perceive of the presence of the super soul within the heart. So that comes later on in this chapter. And then, uh, so that meditation on the super souls, verses 8 to 14, and then 15 to 22, we're going to hear about the process of giving up the body. Are you ready for that? We're not ready for that yet, are you? Are you? No. We're, we're, we're thinking about long-term plan, right? Anyway, one day we have to give up the body, and we're going to hear two different processes. One is the shortcut, the quick way, and the other is more uh, going here and there, visiting higher planets. First of all, you hear about going quickly, directly back to Godhead, not going to any other place in the universe, bypassing all the higher planets and just going straight into the spiritual world. So that will be described first. And then Sukadeva Goswami will describe about the long way, you know, like this, the mystic yoga, text 23 to 32, the mystic yogi gradually ascends. He gradually goes. He's like a tourist, you know, just like people come to India and they tour, they go around, you know, go to this place, go to that place. You know, and so the same way, yogis, when they go out of this planet, they can go up to higher planets, they can go to Swargaloka. You can read in Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sanatana Goswami is described about this cowherd boy from Govardhan and how he travels to so many different places. He goes to Swarg and then he goes to Janaloka and Tapaloka and Mahaloka, then Satyaloka, the planet of Brahma, 
And then he goes beyond such a loka, he goes out into the the spiritual world, first of all into the Brahman. Oh no, he goes to Lord Shiva's abode. He meets Lord Shiva and he goes into the spiritual world. So there's a gradual process, but you can go direct. So the first, we'll hear 15 to 22, that's a direct process. And then 23 to 32, it's a gradual ascent. Hmm, having a good, you know, have a look here, let's go there and look at this place and see what's going on, you know. Go around and check it out, you know how it is. People come to India, oh yes, we're just checking everything out. They don't come to renounce. So we'll hear about that. And then at the end of the chapter, we'll hear how Sukadeva Goswami answers a question which had been put by Maharaj Parikshit, which was there in the first canto in chapter 18, text number 36 and 37. Maharaj Parikshit had asked, what do I need to do? What, what should a person hear, chant, remember and worship in order to achieve perfection? So Sukadeva Goswami will answer that question at the end of the chapter. So these are the different sections which are there in this chapter. We'll go ahead. Right, so coming back again to the first verse. Right, someone like to read for me? Hare Krishna. Yes, go ahead Prabhu. This forgetfulness of the living being Beginning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant is the tendency which can be counteracted by meditation on the on the Virat Rupa of the Lord. And as soon as this forgetfulness is removed, the Vyavasaya Buddhi, as mentioned here and in Bhagavad Gita 2.41, follows at once. This ascertained knowledge of the living beings leads to loving service of the Lord which the living being requires. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.1 Purport. Hare Krishna. All right. So this slide was titled Reviving Our Original Consciousness. So in order to overcome the effects, the attachment to the material world, this maya which causes this forgetfulness, we have to cultivate this vaya vasa buddhi, this fixed intelligence. We have to fix our mind very carefully and very strongly and rigidly, not be diverted. So then, if we have, in order to do that, of course, we have to have buddhi, we have to have this intelligence, this very powerful intelligence is required. And that intelligence will lead to developing our loving relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right, so then the second verse describes uh, Srimad. Oh, someone can read for us? Yeah? The way of presentation of the Vedic sounds is so bewildered that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. The conditioned souls, however, in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places as a fish out of water. Okay, a fish out of water, poor fish. You know, definitely a fish out of water is not going to be happy, not going to be comfortable. So this is our position, conditioned souls. In this material world, we're like fish out of water. We're trying to find happiness. You, you see, uh, Sukadeva Goswami is warning Maharaj Parikshit that don't be attracted to the Vedic hymns. 
all the Vedas and all the sounds of the Vedas, they're just going to misdirect your intelligence. Now, there are a lot, of, quite a few people we know. There's people they do yagyas, they do sacrifices, they want to go to heaven, they want to enjoy the, the, the heavenly planets, they want to drink somaras. They want to enjoy the opulence of heaven and the beauty, all the beautiful forms there. And the people want that kind of sense gratification. And the Vedas talks a lot about that. So uh, Sukadeva Goswami is warning Maharaj Parikshit that don't be thinking about these Vedic hymns. And don't be thinking about the, this goal of the Vedas that this is not what you want. You don't want these things. Why don't we want these things? What's the problem? Why shouldn't we be attached to the, the, the results which we can get from the Vedas? Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Because yes? Vedas mostly talks about the karma kand and through that uh, we go to a higher planet for more sense gratification, which is temporary, and the once it's finished, again we have to come back uh, uh, for, to earn more piety. So this is a everlasting cycle, and this no way take us from from the clutches of Maya. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, because everything is temporary. There, you may go to heaven, but you cannot stay there forever. When you finish, when you use up your piety, you have to come back again down to earth. So this is the problem. The, the Vedas are only offering this kind of allurements of some temporary pleasure. They're not giving us the real goal. And so Sukadeva Goswami doesn't want Maharaj Parikshit to be bewildered by the attraction to the heavenly planets. So he's encouraging him. Just forget about that. Let the conditioned souls dream about these things. But intelligent people will see these heavenly planets as just meaningless. No, no real happiness. All right. And then, oh. okay. The world of names, going on to text number three, Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.3. For this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fixed and never endeavor for unwanted things being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing. So the world of names, different brand names, we become, uh, we feel proud of these different things, different items and gadgets and clothes and shoes. You know, there's brand names, good name, big name, oh. And the whole material world is all centered around these different names. So Sukadeva Goswami, he's encouraging, he said, we should endeavor only for the minimum necessities. You know, we conditioned souls, they think the opposite. They want the maximum. Nobody's interesting and interested in minimizing. We live in a consumer society. And you can see India today. They have these things like, you know, these different companies like Amazon and so on. And people are buying everything. And they're, you know, they're ordering this and that. And Amazon man will come and deliver it to your door. And in this way, people are spending their life and they're actually thinking, this is wonderful. They're thinking, this is very nice. 
Everything I order, I just pick up the phone and they come and bring it. So people are not very intelligent. They're actually foolish. And, but they endeavor, they work so hard in order to enjoy the material world, people will work very hard, day and night, in difficult conditions. Hard labor, Prabhupada said, hard labor for nothing. What seems like some good result is actually nothing. It's very temporary and flickering. So Sukadeva Goswami, he's, he wants Maharaj Pariksit to firmly detach himself from all thoughts of material pleasure. In order to be successful in renunciation, this is very important. If within our minds we're very much attached, then it's not very good. Actually, in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, there's a verse spoken by Lord Krishna, where Lord Krishna said, we shouldn't be too much attached and we shouldn't be too much detached. But that is in order to perform devotional service, like beginning devotional service. Here, at this point in Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit is preparing for death. He doesn't have a long time left to live. So it's definitely important for him to be detached. And in order to be detached, he has to give up all these thoughts of enjoying the material world. If we are too much detached, the heart can become hard and become proud and you become cynical and you become critical of others who are enjoying material facilities. So it's not healthy to be too much detached. So we have to be careful of these things. All right, so let's go ahead. Sukadeva Goswami describes the path of renunciation. <laughs> Of course, his description is very extreme. Remember Sukadeva Goswami, he is an Abhadut, and he left home from birth. As soon as he took birth, he left home, and he's naked. He goes everywhere naked. And he has no attraction to the material world. He's completely aloof. So he, he describes the path of renunciation to Maharaj Parikshit and he says that, well, you, know, you, don't, you don't have to worry about food. How does he say you should get your food? Yes, what are you supposed to eat? Gross food from tree. Huh? Foods in the jungle, foods from trees. It's called madhukari. <laughs> madhukari. Mm, well, actually what he says is, listen, take the fruits from the tree. Eat the fruits from the tree. <laughs> that would be difficult today. Where do you find any fruit, any tree, any tree with fruits which are available for people just to take? If there's any fruits, they'll have it guarded. And if you want water, you drink water from the river. But the rivers are all polluted. You drink the water from the river today, you die quick. So many chemicals. And then what about clothes? What are you supposed to wear? Skins of the trees. Yeah. Yes, Maharaji, what did you say? Skins of the trees. Oh, take the bark from the trees, you mean? Wear the bark of the trees for cloth?
I'm not sure what you mean. What did you say? What from the trees? Bharat skin. In the Bhagavatam text 4, it is written skin of the tree. Oh, the skin of the trees. Okay. The bark from the trees or the skin from the trees can cover the body. Like when Sita, Ram and, and Lakshman went to the forest, they dressed themselves in tree bark. Okay, but Sukadeva Goswami also mentions, he said, are, are there no torn cloth lying on the ground? Take the torn cloth from the ground. Of course, if we were to do things like this nowadays, well, then you'll be arrested and you will be put into prison. You know, vagrant, vagrancy is a crime and you'll be held in prison. <laughs> so this kind of renunciation is not for today. And Sukadeva Goswami also speaks about uh, laying down that you don't need a pillow. What should you use? Um. Um. Yes, the arms. We lay on our arms. Yeah, put your arm down and lay on your arm. You don't need a pillow. Like this, this kind of renunciation. All right, so. <laughs> We're presenting here some summary of uh, Prabhupada's purport here. Would somebody like to read one? Just read one bullet point. The Bhagavad Dharma or the cult of Srimad Bhagavatam is perfectly distinct from the way of fugitive activities. Yes, in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, that was made clear by Srila Vyasadeva that this Bhagavatam rejects all cheating religions. Dharma projata kaitava. There's no kaitava dharma here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, yeah, someone else read another bullet point. All the material existence is moving on as Jagat simply for planning business to make one's position very comfortable or secure. Yes. Material existence, people are always thinking about being comfortable and secure. You know, just like people in Ukraine, they wanted to be comfortable and secure, but then all of a sudden, overnight, the whole situation changed and they had to leave everything. They had to leave their homes and go off. So this is material existence. Sometimes there's a war, sometimes there's an earthquake, sometimes there's a great fire, some, so many different miseries of the material world. We're trying to be comfortable, but it's very difficult to be comfortable anywhere in this material world. Go ahead, read another point. Everyone sees that this existence is neither comfortable nor secure and can never become comfortable or secure in any stage of development. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Another one. The whole material cre creation is a jugglery of name only. In fact, it is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter like earth, water and fire. So we want to understand what is the material world? It's simply, it's simply a combination of all the different elements of the material nature, earth, water, fire, mixed together, different combinations. They're put into very attractive packages, but that's basically everything what's there. Your beautiful motor car, your home, everything, just a combination of these things. Would someone else like to read? Therefore, a devotee is not interested in creating unwanted things for a situation. Which is not at all reality, but simply names of no more significance than the babble of sea waves 
Okay, the bubble, the bubbles of sea waves, yes, and within the sea when the waves come there's often bubbles, but the bubbles are just there for a very short time, moments only. And so devotee also shouldn't be too much attracted to the material world. And we see these things as being so temporary. All right, go ahead. A devotee realizes how much history and historical persons are useless products of flickering time. <laughs> right. History, we study history and we glorify people. We have many historical figures, but what they're, they're, they have all met their end with the, under the influence of time. None of them could conquer time. Someone else read? Yes? The fruitive worker aspires after a big fortune in the matter of wealth, women, and worldly adoration. Mm, fruitive workers, they want a fortune. <laughs> they want to enjoy the material world. So how to enjoy the material world? Well, money is very important, and when you have money, then you'll attract the opposite sex. A man will attract women, women will attract men. And worldly adoration, we want, people want distinction. Actually, this is all subtle sex desire. World, worldly adoration is based on that people want profit, adoration, and distinction. Those three things, wealth, women, and adoration. From love, puja, pratista. These things, this is the material world. It's all based on sense de sex desire, subtle sex desire. Go ahead, someone else read. Those who are fixed in perfect reality are not at all interested in such false things. For them, it is all a waste of time. Mm. We have to understand all of these endeavors to inquire all these things. It's a waste of time. It's all finished with death. Go ahead, someone else. Since every second of human life is important, an enlightened man should be very careful to utilize time very cautiously. Yes. Prabhupada always quoted Janakya that time is more valuable than gold. That you can buy time. You can buy gold, but you cannot buy a moment of time. So every second lost is a great waste. We should be very careful to utilize our time, very carefully. Don't waste time, because whatever we do with our time, that's eternal benefit. If we use it for Krishna, and if we waste it, it's the greatest loss. All right, go ahead. The transcendentalist is born herewith not to be captivated by the external features of fruitive actors. External features of fruitive actors. Yeah, we're often, you know, the whole advertising industry is based on this principle that we like to follow famous figures. You know, and they, they will show this, this lady uses this shampoo to wash her hair. And this man wears this watch and so on. So the external features of fruitive actors, famous people in the material world, and the different things they do, people, we will follow them. People, we will follow the fig, the, what people do. But, you know, I remember when I was a young man, we, we all had long hair because it, it was a fashion. There were famous people with long hair who grew their hair. And, you know, it was common for young men to grow their hair, have long hair. <laughs> and why we did it? Because this is what the, 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 the figures, the heads, the leaders, the famous men in society, they had long hair. We we're following them. The people we looked up to anyway the famous fruit of actors. We followed their features. 
Go ahead. Human, human life. Is, life. Human life is never meant for sense gratification, but for self realization. As Rima Bhagavatam instructs us solely on this subject from the very beginning to the end. Hmm. This is an important message. We have to get it into our heads. What is the goal of life? We have to become convinced of this, that sense gratification is just the dream, it's just an illusion. All right, we have a few more points here. Yes, someone can read. The civilization which aims at this utmost perfection never indulges in creating unwanted things or to follow the principle of best use of bad bargain. The Prabhupada uses the statement, best use of a bad bargain. Hmm. So the human life is a bad bargain. We have a body which has so many defects and which is doomed to die. But we can make use of this body. We can make use of this body to get the utmost perfection. So if we don't do that, then we waste that. We have to know how to use the human body, how to make the best of it. It's a problem to have a material body. We're subject to old age, we're subject to disease, and we know we're all going to die. So it's a bad bargain. But we can use it for some good thing. And the best, the most important thing is we can use it to get out of this material world. That is the real perfection. And we can make use of the body for that. All right, one more. Go ahead, spiritual advancement. Someone read. Spiritual advancement of the living entity is absolutely necessary. Yeah, we should be convinced of this. Of course we are, that's why you've come to Krishna consciousness. You have a, a, a but we, we want to be firmly convinced of this and really dedicate ourselves. It's absolute necessity. Whatever advancement we make, it's never lost. On the other hand, if we don't take advantage, then we simply waste our life and we go into the lower species of life. So we should be very conscious, what is the purpose of our life? And Srimad Bhagavatam is bringing this point out again and again. Don't waste this human life, don't miss this opportunity. Go ahead. One should accept only the bare necessities of life and depend more on God's gift without diversion of human energy for any other purpose. Okay, the bare necessities again. Prabhupada is mentioned, or Sukadeva Goswami was talking like this to Maharaj Parikshit, with simple living and high thinking are very important. Don't be concerned for comfortable and opulent lifestyle. Keep, keep the life basic and depend on God's gift, what is given to us by honest endeavor, without over-endeavor. Prabhupada talks about without diversion of human energy. So people will sacrifice all their energy, they'll work in horrible conditions, they'll sacrifice their health and their life, just for making money so that they can satisfy their senses. So we shouldn't fall into that trap. Yes, another one? The materialistic advancement of civilization is called the civilization of the demons, which ultimately ends in wars and scarcity. <laughs> uh, one devotee was... Uh, saying just the other day how Srila Prabhupada said to his servant, he said to his servant, he said, you know, you have no idea how demoniac the leaders of these different countries actually are. 
So, <coughs> talk, we talk about material advancement. <laughs> it's advancement to hell. So, a civilization of the demons. And it ends in wars and scarcity. And we see, we can see wars, threats of war and wars going on even. Always some place, there's some war, some problem going on, people fighting and issues coming up, people not able to, they're not able to live peacefully and happily. And even scarcity also, food problems, although there's so much land, but still people go hungry because some class of people are exploiting. So this is a problem, material world created by people. People, the civilization of the demons, just simply create a hellish civilization. Go ahead. The transcendentalist. The transcendentalist is want to be fixed in mind so that even if there is a difficulty in plain living and high thinking, he will not budge even an inch from his stark determination. Ah, you see, this is required, this kind of determination, we have to be fixed, we have to be convinced that this is the right thing to do, that this, we're going the right way, plain living and high thinking. This is the best thing to try to put ourself into that mode, into that lifestyle. So then it is the duty of a transcendentalist to help persons who desire salvation and to support the cause of salvation. So as devotees, we have a duty to distribute this knowledge, to share it with others and not to keep it just for ourselves. So we ask you, to reflect on your own experience and consider how Lord Krishna or the Supreme Lord make, makes arrangements for your maintenance. We're hearing about Maharaj Parikshit. He's being told, you know, to live off nature, just to eat from the trees and just to drink the water from the rivers and lay on the ground. And, you know, he's been told just to live on whatever's provided by nature. You don't need to do anything. So, do you have any experience like this, how Krishna makes arrangements for your maintenance? Anyone? Anyone like to offer a contribution on this? Did you have any realization how Krishna was providing for you and making arrangements for your maintenance? Duty Gopa Maharaji, what about you? Um, Maharaj, uh, I might have one similar uh, incident once I was when in Vrindavan. So uh, I was out for Parikarma during the whole day and um, I didn't eat since morning. And when I was halfway through the Parikarma, I realized that I had no money on me. So, you know, I wouldn't be able, able to eat. So, um, like at that time, it's like I, I was very small. It's seven seven years back so then uh, there was this temple i entered and uh, i was just having darshans and suddenly one person who was in charge of the temple they invited me in and they said that we have just offered bhoga to thakurji so you also please sit down and have prashadam with us and i was about to leave i was thinking i should go back and you know be back on time but finally they made me sit and serve me prashadam. So I just realized that even if we don't have anything, Krishna will do something. Like he'll make arrangements via his devotees. Mm -hmm. But he'll distribute his mercy. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. Hmm. You. Anyone else like to contribute in this? Well, the more, maybe because most of you are 
maybe not full-time engaged in Krishna's service, you don't get so much opportunity to experience this. But I know myself as a devotee that so many times Krishna would just make arrangements for our maintenance. Traveling around sometimes with nowhere to stay. <laughs> and Krishna would just arrange, somebody would come along and invite us, come and stay in my place. And then, like Duti Gopi said, uh, she got prasadam. And I had the experience one time, I was in Africa and we, I was traveling and <laughs> in Africa, you know, and somehow we came to the temple and we went there, we went to the temple and it was the middle of the day and the brahmana there, he'd, he'd just finished his offering and he, when he saw us, he immediately had us sit down and take prasadam. You know, it was it was so so nice. You know, um, the way he received us was so so nice that he just cooked for the Lord. And pro always, obviously, he was cooking. Maybe he's going to eat the prasadam himself, and just him and his family there. But when he saw us, he immediately insisted that we sit down and eat. And we took such nice prasadam, which he'd cooked. So I saw Krishna's arrangement. And many times running the temple, run, maintaining the temple, we do things, you know, have to have, we're trying to put on festivals and, and with no prasadam, no money, <laughs> how to manage, couldn't pay the rent even. Somehow we met, how did we manage? It was just somehow Krishna only was maintaining us, nobody else. So I had a lot of opportunity to appreciate how Krishna was providing. Yes, anybody else? Hare yes. Krishna Maharaj, yeah. So I also had similar kind of experience like in Daily, like my younger daughter was operated in the hospital for her heart and I came to see her because she was still in ICU and then she got consciousness and I have been asked that she was feeling uneasy. I have to attend her in the ICU and my wife and my elder daughter was there far off at, at the guest house and has no way to connect. And then middle of the night when she slept, then I thought of rushing back uh, to my family and bring them early in the morning. And that time this hospital uh, was middle of nowhere. So there's no way. And somebody came and said that they will drop me to the highway. And then he said that he will drop me uh, uh, to the place where my family was staying, which was quite far off, which was came as a surprise and we raised their hat three o'clock early in the morning and then we could able to bring them back early morning uh, back to the hospital. So that was also a kind of uh, experience where we are running against time and Krishna arranged and safely. And of course, they were all my four daughters are devotees. So some of the Lord has helped us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. We'll go ahead. Okay, this is a, 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 we want to have a little preaching exercise actually. So you can see there are three groups. We've got the Jagannath group, Baladev group and Subhadra group. So how many people do we have here this evening? 22 Maharaj. So you have to make like uh, 22, so we got three groups. So. What, we'll have like seven people in a group? Yeah. Maybe. Let's see, maybe we can have six groups. Six into 22. So one can have eight people, other can have seven each. So including you, Maharaj, we have 23. So... No, um, I, I don't want too many people in the group because then you know, one or two people will do all the work and the others won't do anything. So let's have a smaller number of people. We'll have, we'll have six six groups. We can have two Jagannath, two Baladev, and two Subhadra groups. Right? 
So six groups, so divide the 22 people into six groups. So there'll be like three people in a group and then four in other groups. Yes, Maharaj. And then the Jagannath group, you have to do Bhagavat Dharma, dealing with verses three and four. And you're, you're being interviewed by a lifestyle, an alternative lifestyle magazine reporter. You know, an alternative lifestyle magazine reporter is coming to inquire about Krishna consciousness, about Bhagavad Dharma. What is this? What are you practicing? How are you going to present to the magazine? that this is a practical lifestyle we'd like to hear from the Jagannath group, based on verses 3 and 4. And then the Baladev group will deal with verse 5, and your topic is about householders and sannyasis and their duties, and you, how are you going to present it to the congregation? You. You have to explain how we want to hear how you will present to the congregation the relationship and the duties of householders and sannyasis. And then the Subhadra group, your, your question is about how Krishna arranges maintenance of devotees. And we want to be able to present it to gross materialistic people gross materialistic people. In other words, they're atheists and they're very attached to sense gratification. How could we ever convince them about the maintenance of devotees, how Krishna arranges to maintain devotees? Is it clear? So group one and two will be Jagannath group. Group three and four will be Baladev group, and group five and six will be Subhadra group. And Maharaj, how uh, long should we give them for presentation to prepare, to discuss? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Because this will also be part of the break, right? This will, you know, those of you who need the break at this time, you know, take a take a time for the break. And so I think 10 minutes, see how you get on. If you need more time, we could allow it. But I think 10 minutes should be enough. You know, I don't want a whole thesis. You're not going to present a, a doctorate or anything. Just want a few minutes presentation from you. Two, three minutes presentation. So All I right. have, uh, uh, yes, Maharaj, I have assigned uh, the group names as well, and the invite has been sent out to you so that they... Okay, thank join. you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Do we know what question we have to do? Which group are we? Um, uh, Maharaj, uh, everyone has been assigned a group. Uh, I am just assigning you as well. It automatically did you, did, assigned. Did them. you tell them what group they're in, whether it's Jagannath, Baladeva, or Subhadra? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Their group is already. Um, uh, they ha it has a name like room one instead of room one it has Jagannath. Room okay, one. good. Okay.
Hare Krishna. So welcome everyone back. So let's hear from I, I was in one Jagannath group. I'd like to hear from the other Jagannath group. So the other Jagannath group had Abey Prabhu, Dhananjay Kumar Prabhu, Kanak Naik Prabhu, and Rati Pradamatri. So please present. We have a spokesman. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, so, um, yes, so our topic was that um, we are presenting on the basis of text three and four to a lifestyle reporter. So, um, like this person, maybe this person is trying to endorse something um, of his brand. So then we have to, um, you know, we, we ask that person, what is the ultimate good from whatever brand he's endorsing? And uh, does it require, I mean, we spend so much of our time earning money and so much of hard work we put into it, but is the result going to be um, equivalent to what hard work we have put into that? And is it going to be satisfactory? Because nobody in the world is um, satisfied by material things. So we have to, um, you know, see what is the return out of what we are doing. And we are just uh, being, uh, you know, enslaved to somebody's ideas. They are promoting some brand and we get enslaved. They, may, they might themselves not be using that brand, but uh, by promoting it so much, uh, we are getting affected and we try to, you know, and also it is creating an artificial living where we try to copy others. Uh, if one person, some you know, some uh, big personality, big shot is uh, using that brand. So by advertising or something, um, it is creating a competition in the unnecessary competition in the society where, uh, you know, everybody is trying to follow that person, even though it is not going to give any tangible uh, result. And also it leads to exploitation in the society. And... Um, also, uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, one person is promoting and one person is using, but the third person is uh, trying to get the benefit out of it. Uh, there are big people at the back who are actually, uh, you know, getting whatever the profit is being made out of that brand. And all others are simply suffering. Mm. Okay. So, yes, Maharaj. If anybody wants to add, they can add. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, well, I, I was in the other Jagannath group, and we were discuss We were hearing actually one devotee was interviewing the other devotee, Chaitanya Hari Prabhu was replying, and he was explaining about Krishna conscious lifestyle, how we accept everything as the property of Krishna and the grace of Krishna, and, and we're not anxious for more. So the question was raised, well, what if someone don donates a laptop or a mobile phone or what, how do you do, deal with it? Are we going to reject it? And so I said, no, we can use it. You know, everything is there, can be used in the service of Krishna, but not with possessiveness, not that we think this is mine, but rather we understand it's the grace of Krishna, it's given to us by the grace of Krishna, and we should use it for the service of Krishna. So this way, practice an alternative lifestyle, something different from the material world. All right, let's hear from the Baladev group who were discussing about sannyasis and brahmacharis and presenting it to the congregation. So um, first, Baladev group had Nidai, Nadeshwar Prabhu, uh, Nitesh Prabhu, Premanan Prabhu, and Shamabhakti Mataji. So please present your points. Hare Krishna, uh, pranams to Dandot pranams to all the devotees present here. So uh, we discussed about um, um, about the significance of sannyasis, their activities, and uh, and the grihasthas. So some of the points that we discussed were especially for the for the for the sannyasis first. So they should be like contributing substantially to the society, just not stay dependent on the support from householders. 
So their aim should be to provide something substantial to the society that leads to the ultimate benefit. Uh, they should accept any alums or any donations or charity from the householders from the viewpoint of blessing the donors, you know, uh, giving them the opportunity to serve and again to connect with the spiritual uh, uh, perspective. Uh, their aim, major aim should be preaching Krishna consciousness and leaving behind some uh, literary work that that helps them, guide them to, uh, you know, uh, the devotees on uh, working on the right path. And uh, they should have absolutely no material sense gratification. From the householder part, um, you know, it is mentioned that uh, they should give the alums. Uh, it's part of their duty. And they should do it without asking, you know. They, they, they should be maintaining other three, um, um, three um, society uh, parts of the society. They should maintain the other three divisions. And uh, they should do all atiti satkar. Uh, they should have performing controlled sense gratification and uh, they should also aim towards uh, you know developing their life with the controlled sense gratification developing their krishna consciousness so this, this the is the sannyasis or this is the grihastha i mentioned about sannyasis and then about the householders the second third point three points i mentioned last three points i mentioned about the householders so what were the points for the householders for householders, uh, they should give the charity or alums uh, without asking. It is their duty to maintain the other three divisions in the society, uh, like the brahmacharis, the Rasta, so the vanprastas, and the sannyasis. And uh, they should be uh, engaged in controlled sense gratification. Um, and they should do atiti satkar, and they should all uh, always invite uh, great Vaishnavas, mendicants like sannyasis at their home and serve them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's hear from the other group, the other Baladev group. Do you have anything else to add to this? The other group? The other group had Delakshmi Mataji, Diksha Mataji, Divan Radhika Mataji, Sri Radha Mataji, and Vishnu Panda Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, they were mostly similar. One point I would like to add is that uh, maybe that they would have shared that also that. Uh, a mendicant is completely dependent on Lord's mercy. That a path, he's fearless and an honest person, and he's completely dependent on Lord's mercy for his existence. And also, proper uh, uses here that how much uh, the person that uh, sannyasi is surrendered in the sense that if the Lord can maintain a person who, who is bereft of all the um, all the things in his life still krishna maintains him so why will he neglect the maintenance of a surrendered soul so like that yes right yes that point is made thank you manager all right let's move on to the last group to hear about depend how we're going to preach to materialistic people about depending on the lord's mercy and how the lord provides for people. Who is in that Subhadra group? Um, Adbhut Dev Prabhu, Ashwini Mataji, Madhusudan Prabhu and Padmaradha Mataji. Um, are, the, are you there? Yes. Who is the yeah. spokesman? Madhusudan Prabhu, you want to give it a go? Whatever you say. Your first point? Okay. Uh, all right. So we discussed in our group and uh, because the gross materialists, they think that working hard in life is all in all to earn money, to live a nice, happy life. So we want to address to them that there are so many people who work hard so much, but still they don't really meet their ends. The so working hard is not enough. In, just instead of looking at economical development, we should also, along with that, look at dharma aspect. If you follow the laws made by God, then the Lord will maintain us. Just like if the citizens of the state, they follow the state laws, then the state provides for them, maintains them. In the purpose, Shri Prabhupada mentions that when a child is obedient, then the mother and father 
they maintain, they provide. So similarly, when the people, they become obedient to Lord, obey the rules and follow those rules, live life based on dharma, then their needs will be fulfilled. And Padma Radha Mataji, she added this point that, okay, you want to add Mataji? So I add it as an example, like sometimes uh, we are stuck on a road, our car breaks down and then um, we wait and then a help just suddenly comes, which we don't know. And then we want to explain that, yes, at that time when the help comes, we realize that probably the God has helped. But then once the help is finished and they're not in that situation, they just forget about it. We need to tell them that just like a, a mother always remembers their child, even though when the child grows up, he or she forgets their mother because they're busy into their own routine, which is also mentioned in the purport of the verse six. Hmm. Okay. You know, but as a materialist, I would just say, well, that was just good luck. How do I know it was actually Krishna? You could say this was just good luck. You're saying it's Krishna and not everybody got saved. Not everybody had somebody come and pick them up. Some people would just, they were stuck there and they just died. They froze to death. The car broke down in the, in the middle of the forest or in the middle of the desert or somewhere. And the whole night they were there. In the morning they were found dead. And sometimes it happens, nobody finds them. And so, you know, how do you know it's actually Krishna? Isn't this just your sentiment? You know, I'm a hardcore materialist. How are you going to convince me this is actually Krishna? Anyone? There are so many animals they are being maintained by the Lord. So many elephants, ants, everybody in the forest. They are, everybody is getting food. Well, materialists will say, well, that's nature. Nature is provided everything. Where is your Krishna? You can say that the nature is being controlled and governed by the Supreme Lord, just like there is a mother, then there is a father. So the nature does not work independently. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Sachara Charam. The nature is working under the direction of Krishna. Yes. Good. Yeah. When we talk about nature, it means a person. He has his nature and she has her nature. Everyone has nature. So we talk about nature, there's a person behind nature. We have to understand that. Okay. And there's another Subhadra group? No, Maharaj. There was just one Subhadra group. Oh, just one Subhadra group. Okay. All right. So we'll stop there. Let's see. We'll go back here. Yeah. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Here's an interesting picture. Now look at this. How would you preach the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context? And so, you know, you can see on the left there, you know, you've got these two uh, Shivites, you know, and they're Westerners, they're, Europe, they're Western bodied, and they've got, you know, the beard and the matted locks and body covered in ashes and rudrakshas and everything. So, you know, how, of course, they're not in a modern context, but in the same way, a Krishna conscious temple is also not really a modern context. There we are with our dhoti, and you can see somebody's there in saffron robes and is sitting there giving a class, you know. So, how can we preach this Bhagavad Dharma? to the audience and to make it realistic, to make it practical for them.
someone like to contribute here? What do you think? I mean, you can, I can see, you know, the, the ladies here today, you know, the ladies are, you know, in the modern context, you know, they're, you know, I don't see too many ladies with saris on, with their hair covered and everything, you know. You know, they're living in a modern context. So, how do we preach the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context? It's not just simply only dress. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, what I feel is uh, when we have to preach to the modern context, we have to come with the modern tools as well. You know, that's why we have the various ways of uh, calling it seminars. So we call it as anxiety, stress relief seminars anger management seminars and you know and and link them to uh, gita that how gita provides the profound messages that can help help improve your lifestyle and then gita becomes their household uh, book uh, to release them from material pains and uh, and anxieties at the same time then uh, when they start connecting with the spiritual divine book bhagavad gita and connecting with bhagavad devotees and automatically uh, the actual essence of bhakti also starts coming. But to begin with, I feel we should start with this kind of discourses, you know, like calling it a, in a modern way, uh, the seminars or uh, arranging some workshops. If we say this is spiritual discourse, people will run away. But when we call this is a workshop and all that in a proper arrangement, in official kind of environment, then people get attracted to that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there's some nice, nice approach. Anybody else like to contribute on this? I see a few other hands up. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead, Prabhu. Maharaj, we can say that how this material world is very difficult to live in. So much of trouble, difficulties are there in the material world. So in the material world, one cannot become happy. Then we are searching for the happiness. Then you can slowly tell them how they can become happy by surrendering to the person who is superior to us. In this way, slowly you can bring them to God consciousness. Then slowly to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's a bit bold, you know, the modern context, not everyone's a, a theist, not everyone wants to come to God. You're presenting a very religious approach. I don't know how much people will be inspired. No, but, you know, at the same time, there are a good number of people who do believe in God. And it's not that we only preach to atheists, we have to preach to everyone. All right, uh, Diksha Ahuja Maharaj has got her hand up. Hey Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj, uh, we can also, as people are uh, willing to go into music, so we can uh, ask, we can call them in concerts of Hare Krishna Mahamantra and with loud uh, bands, we can encourage them because the modern people like sound, so music. So this is one way. Yeah, that yes, music. Yeah, and we have different kinds of music, you know, we have, we have groups also, we have, <laughs> we have, you have people doing Hare Krishna Kirtan to all different kinds of tunes. It's available to everyone. All right. Madhusudan Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, in the modern day society, there are many practical problems for which people are looking for solutions and they don't mind where the solution is coming from. Relationship issues, anxiety, uh, mind related difficulties. So we have solutions for those things given in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. And if we approach people with those solutions, those who are intelligent and mindful, they will take to it. And once they get benefited by it, their faith develops, and then they will take to the other principles also mentioned in the scriptures. So what's the initial thing to get them? We should know what are the problems that are there prevalent in the modern day society and how the scriptures provide the solution for them and then give that approach to them. Okay. Yes, dealing with practical issues. 
Sometimes people need jobs, you know. You know, one field of preaching which has become very successful, we find that the, the farms, ISKCON farms, that, that there's a number of people who travel the world and they're, they're called woofers. And uh, they often come to our Krishna conscious farms and they stay on the Krishna conscious farm and they do some service there. And in exchange, they're given accommodation and prasadam and they're happy. And so we're finding a lot of young people coming to into contact with Krishna consciousness through this program, through having farms and getting people, engaging people and doing some kind of service like this. Woofers, they're called. They, so I know like New Govardhan in Australia is popular and in Malaysia we have a farm also. We get a number of people from different countries coming by and staying, contributing, doing service. Okay, and then uh, at Buddha Dev Prabhu. So, Maharaj, actually, materialistic person is uh, very fearful to leave anything. So, he won't. Their, their general, general notion is that if we come to Krishna consciousness, they come to bhakti. So, they have to leave their jobs. They have to leave everything. So, first, we have to attract them and teach them that we don't have to lose anything. They can do their jobs. They can do whatever they are doing right now. They just need to add Krishna consciousness in their life. And... Uh, and we could also engage them, like calling them on festivals, visiting to Mayapur, Vrindavan, some spiritually potent places, so that they, they sh initially people have some sort of picnic type of peaking feeling, like they want to move here and go somewhere else. And uh, we could also serve nice prashadam. So, so presenting some attractive features of uh, Krishna consciousness will definitely help them to attract their attention. So whatever, like in says in modern world people see so many advertisements. So we could advertise such part of Krishna consciousness, which attracts the attention of people like beautiful deities, beautiful prashadam, nice prashadam, and uh, the spiritually potent and vibrant temples, dhams. So these things would be, I think, uh, is quite potent. And if anybody attracts to any anything of these things, he will definitely come to Krishna consciousness. And like one of the, one of the Mataji said that like we could also like do some seminars and also some energetic kirtans, so these things. <laughs> yes, different people are attracted to different things. It's not a common, you know, not everyone the same thing. Some people, they don't like too much noise, they want it to be more peaceful and quiet and gentle. Some people want it to be very high energy, high energy, a lot of noise and jumping and run, like that. Not, not everyone has the same taste. So it's difficult to try to please everyone. Duty Gopi Maharaji, do you, you have your hand up? Yes, Maharaj. So uh, Maharaj, like um, in, you know, when this this world is really changing far, like it's changing in a rapid pace and people, they are being, they are very frustrated with their thoughts of, and they don't know where to go. They have no direction. So, and they want to be heard, they want to be listened to, like they want someone to talk to them. So initially there was this idea where, uh, uh, you know, brahmacharis or people like experienced preacher, they used to set up stalls, ask a monk, you know, about your problems, maybe ask it because the people want someone to hear them, but they should not be judgmental about it. And, you know, sometimes people are hesitant to talk to their friends, to their family about the thoughts that are going on there in their mind so this approach of ask a monk where you know people because they also feel that spiritual people have their lives sorted and so ask a monk is a um, platform where people can express and they can share what they are feeling and you know the preacher they can help them get over by obviously uh, giving the instances from scriptures but also talking them you know talking with them and hearing their actual problems without being judgmental so Maharaj, this approach of asking a monk yeah it's nice it's, it's something we could do in in rathiatra and like that we could have a booth ask a monk it's a nice a nice approach nice question 
I know in Calcutta Rathiatra, we have a, they have a one-week program and they have this uh, big grounds and they have a, both questions and answers. And so they could put the title, Ask a Monk. It's nicer, I think, Ask a Monk. <laughs> Yes, the thank you for the book. Thank you. Okay, just a couple of more hands, is it? Who is this? Diksha Mataji? Yeah? Did you answer? Did we yes, hear from you? Maharaj, I wanted to just add one point that they can be engaged in some practical service. Like Prabhupada used to engage everybody. If they can be arranged in something tangible in the temple, that can help. Yeah, yeah, very important. They should feel useful. They, everybody wants to be engaged. They need something to do. Okay, Anya. And Dhananjaya, is it Prabhu? Yeah, yeah Hare Krishna Maharaji. So what we do that, uh, uh, the, we have a customized solutions for all classes of people, right from the school going kid to the students. So, uh, school uh, going kid, we have a weekend value education while for universities and colleges, we have a weekend where we uh, arrange uh, uh, Pravachan, Kirtan, and, and Prasadam, which is always attractive. Besides that, the students, they want to use a Krishna house concept, which has really helped well. Then in corporate uh, and, and, and training where we a handle a lot of relationship related issue. Now here, uh, we, not only the monks, but basically a lot of Garhasta who are the practicing devotees, they are, they are one among those corporates. And they start from their own lifestyle when they are preaching that how the stress can be banished, ma major in a better fashion, lifestyle can be more balanced. And similar kind of things we are practicing among the students that who are a devotees they have a more disciplined life and which give a better impact on their on their performance okay so, okay thank you Trubu. solutions okay we have to go ahead let's see here now Prabhupada, that the point from Prabhupada said our principle should be not to think about our personal maintenance Ajita, the Supreme Lord Krishna, he's maintaining everyone. Yoga, Kshema, Vahami, Aham. And he'll not maintain a person who is fully surrendered to him? No. How can it be? Suppose a gentleman is maintaining so many other children, and he does not maintain his own children? Surely he does. Hmm. Therefore, our principle should be we should not think about our personal maintenance. We should dedicate our life for Krishna and Krishna will take care. That should be the principle. Don't be harassed thinking always how I shall be maintained. That is not the problem. Maintenance is no problem. Real problem is how we shall be fully surrendered to Krishna. That is wanted. It's from a lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam, the second chapter, text number five in New York. Okay. So serving the Lord in the heart, thus being fixed, one must render service unto the super soul situated in one's own heart by his omnipotency because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited. He is the ultimate goal of life. And by worshipping him, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. So we have to serve, recognize the super soul in the heart, and we want to render service to him. And then text number seven goes on talking about self-interest, giving up our own self-interest. Who else but the gross materialist will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only, seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering uh, as a consequence of accruing the results of their own work. So Sukadeva Goswami is warning Maharaj Parikshit and all of us 
the danger, what happens? You become attached to the temporary and material things. And the result is simply you fall into the river of suffering, the material existence. It's just simply misery. So the mass of people, they're like sheep. They follow one another and they follow into the ignorance, into darkest ignorance. So we shouldn't be blind followers. Rather, we want to awaken transcendental vision. See with the eye of knowledge. So Prabhupada explains also about the duty of a renounced person, right? The first, the first duty of a person in the renounced order of life is to contribute some literary work for the benefit of the human being in order to give him realized direction towards self-realization. So, renounced order of life is never meant for begging or living at the cost of others as a parasite. Right? So, Krishna consciousness, renounced, we have renounced devotees, brahmacharis, vanapastas, sannyasis, they're renounced. And they may be full-time engaged in preaching work, but they should not be just simply begging. But they're meant to give whatever they have, whatever knowledge they have, they're meant to give it and share it to others. And Prabhupada talks about how the Goswamis, they spent every day, they would discuss the philosophy. They would discuss with each other. It's Seva Kund. There, where the Radha Damodar temple is, the Goswamis were meeting there every day and they would discuss the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So that's the business of renounced life, that they should be concerned in preaching and distributing this message, arranging programs and getting people together, preaching. So then Sukadeva Goswami talks about meditation on the Super Soul. And you can see here the Super Soul is presented, verses 8 to 13. From text number 8, it's stated, Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only 8 inches, with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell and a club, respectively. So the four symbols of Vishnu are held in the hands of Lord the Paramatma. The Paramatma is the expansion of the super of Paramatma is the expansion of Lord Krishna, and the Paramatma itself expands is the Virata Rup. The Virata Rup is the expansion of Paramatma, and Paramatma is the expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. So it carries four symbols, the Chakra, Padma, Gada, and uh, high Conch, Shank, right? These are the four symbols of Vishnu. So here's some points from Prabhupada's purports on this section about uh, how to get liberation quickly to go directly back to Godhead. Uh, the process of meditation recommended, Srimad Bhagavatam, is not to fix one's attention on something impersonal or void. The meditation should concentrate on the Supreme Person, either in his Virata Rup or in his Satchit Ananda Vigraha. So, Satchit Ananda Vigraha can be also the deities. So, meditation, so we see there's meditational groups, they meditate on a light, or they meditate on a dot, or they meditate on the sun. And in this way they imagine the oneness. But Prabhupada explains, and he's explaining according to the Shastra, 
that we should meditate on the form of the Lord, not on the oneness, but on the form of the Lord. Those who are too engrossed in sense gratification cannot be allowed to participate in archana or to touch the transcendental form of the Radha Krishna. For them it is better to meditate on the gigantic Virata Rup of the Lord. So people are too engrossed in sense gratification. We don't allow people to just come on the altar and touch the deities. We have, you can see, we have some restrictions about who gets to go on the altar. And even those who are on the altar, not everyone is touching the deities. Often they're just offering the RT and the one person is given the service of dressing the deities. So people must be pure. They're going to touch the deities. They're going to engage in deity worship. They have to be twice initiated. They have to be strictly following. And then said they should, they should restrict their study of Srimad Bhagavatam to the first two cantos. So the first two cantos of the Bhagavatam are called Pada Padma, the lotus feet. And so people who are too much attached to sense gratification will be more beneficial for them to study more the first two cantos, to study again and repeatedly and get the first two cantos really studied clearly. Don't jump a rush to go through the Bhagavatam, but hear it from the beginning carefully. And without purifying ourselves, we're not encouraged to go forward. Some way or other, one must try to re-establish one's forgotten relationship with the Lord in order to gain real happiness in life. Without such meditation on God, either personal or impersonal, all good qualities of the human being become covered with misconceptions regarding his constitutional position. All right, so here's instant liberation for the detached yogi. This is Yoga Mishra Bhakti. Bhakti Yoga Mishra. Bhakti Mishra Yoga. Bhakti Mishra Yoga. It's doing yoga, but with some devotion there. So he gets instant liberation, goes immediately, gives up the body, goes immediate, immediately into the spiritual world. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti explains, this is the process followed by the Bhakti Mishra Yogi, who have no interest in seeing higher planets up to Brahmaloka. In other words, they're not tourists. They're not interested in trying to enjoy the material world. They just want to leave it behind and to go back to Godhead, into the spiritual sky. So this is for the detached yogis. You can understand, you have to be very detached in order, because heaven is so attractive, so alluring, and then the higher you go, up the high, up, all the way up to the planet of Brahma, there'll be so many things which will just bewilder the mind and can attract your attention. And you can easily be distracted from going back to Godhead. So you have to be very careful about that. So then 22 to 32, you hear about gradual elevation until liberation. So Sukadeva Goswami had spoke about instant liberation. Now he's describing gradual liberation. Right? Krama Mukti. If one desires to attain Brahma Loka or other higher realms in this universe, at the time of giving up the body, one does not give up the mind and senses. Rather, with the mind and senses, 
one goes to enjoy those planets. Now, in the previous case, the instant liberation, they had to give up the mind and senses. They gave up everything and left the body. Okay, what's this? Desire to be dominated by the supreme predominator. All the cities mentioned above are features of domination over the world. The devotees of the Lord are not ambitious to dominate a false and temporary phenomena. On the contrary, a devotee wants to be dominated by the supreme predominator, the Lord. A desire to serve the Lord, the supreme pre predominator, is spiritual or transcendental. One has to attain this purification of the mind and the senses to get admission into the spiritual world. So, this is the problem. <laughs> we have to learn to be dominated by the Supreme Predominator. In other words, Lord Sri Krishna. And we have to cultivate that very strong desire to just be in His service and to be fully submissive to Him. So, it requires a lot of purification, purification of the mind and the senses. We have to give up the false ego, the attachments, the identities which we carry with us in material life. And it, it's possible, it's not impossible, it's possible if we fully dedicate ourselves to the process. So it describes, uh, in the Purpur Prabhupada, describes how there are three types of perfection. For those who are going the gradual, taking the long way, there are three, ty three types of perfection to bring them up to Brahmaloka. First of all, you have the karmi. The karmi who attains a specific planet by dint of pious activities. He attains places in terms of his comparative pious activities, right? So, to most karmis, they would go to heaven, they'll go to swarg. But some people are even more pious, they'll go higher. And there's different planetary systems above heaven. And for some people, they may be pious, they simply come back on this planet. They come back on the earthly planet and enjoy some comfortable situation. Piety. They get, they're born into a wealthy family or an aristocratic family, so they have that piety. So that's one kind, one kind of perfection, the karmi. And then the jnani, he has attained the place by dint of virat or haranyagarbha worship. And he's liberated along with the liberation of Brahma. That means at the end of the lifetime of Brahma. So you have to wait for the end of the lifetime of Brahma. And at that time only you can get liberated. Then they, they get to that point by worshipping the Vrataru. And then the other one, the final one, the th third type the one who attains a place by dint of devotional service can penetrate into the different coverings of the universe and thus ultimately disclose his spiritual identity in the absolute atmosphere of supreme existence. So you can see quite a difficult thing to get so pure, to, to get completely free of material desires, go through all the different coverings, and to also know your spiritual identity, to understand your position in the spiritual world, what is your rasa with Krishna, 
And like that, then you can enter into the spiritual existence. So this is from the purport of text number 28. And here's a quote from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, 5th chapter, 22. The residents of Brahmaloka, they can attain perfection in three different ways. Virtuous persons who reach Brahmaloka by dint of their pious work become masters of various planets after the resurrection of Brahma. And those who worship Garbhodakshai Vishnu, they are liberated with Brahma. And those who are pure devotees of the personality of Godhead at once push through the covering of the universe and enter the spiritual sky. So again, the th same three kinds of perfection. All right, moving on, text number 30. Prabhupada is emphasizing the importance of hearing and reading. Reading is also hearing, and Prabhupada says mandatory, means you must do it. So when we speak of hearing and chanting, it means it means that not only should one chant and hear of the holy name of the Lord as Rama, Krishna, or systematically the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But one should also read and hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. So it's very important. This is the most important of the nine kinds of devotional service. Hearing. We have to hear. Prabhupada is emphasizing this point in this section. And he, Chaitanya Charitamrita mentions the different creepers which we have to be concerned with, which can help or which can pro give us problems in our spiritual advancement. To get taste of the holy name, we have to avoid these different anartas. So different weeds which grow and which impede the growth of our creeper are creepers of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection. Diplomatic behavior, animal killing, mundane profiteering, mundane adoration, mundane importance. All these are unwanted creepers. Yes, the, the final section, 33 to 37, uh, quote from the Varaha Purana, describing about achieving the Supreme. By my personal desire, I bring my unalloyed devotees to my Supreme abode. Placing them on the shoulders of Garuda, they return without having to undergo the Pa the path of light. So the path of light, that's a, that's a long way to go back to Godhead. It takes a long time. That way. But if, if Krishna comes or Vishnu comes and places us on the shoulders of Garuda, then very quickly, very easily, we can go back to the spiritual world. So the final two verses, uh, text number 30, uh, 36 is there, and uh, that's the answer to the question about what we should be doing uh, to achieve perfection, what should we hear about chanting and remembering. It's mentioned there uh, that we should engage in devotional service. And then the final verse of this chapter tells us the result of engaging in devotional service. And so this is mentioned here, Prabhupada is emphasizing the importance of the path of devotion. He said, there are many indirect methods 
for deliverance from the clutches of the material existence. But none of them is as easy and auspicious as Bhakti Yoga. So there are many other methods, you know, you can do yoga, hatha yoga, kundalini yoga, you can do meditation, sitting silently, not moving, and you can study all the Vedas, and you can go around all the tirthas and do a lot of uh, parikramas. But the most important thing is, you'll hear, well, Prabhupada said, the means of jnana and yoga and other anal allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer. Such activities help one to reach the stage of bhakti yoga after many, many years. <laughs> so you may study jnana and yoga after many years and you will come to bhakti, may maybe. But sometimes, often, the heart becomes so hard that you're not able to take up bhakti because the effect of jnana and yoga is just simply makes the heart hard. We want to melt the heart, make the heart soft. And so the purification you get from jnana and yoga is not like the purification which you get from bhakti. It's only bhakti which gives us the necessary purification to go back to Godhead. Jnana and yoga are not going to give us that kind of purification. As already explained in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, either direct bhakti yoga or the means which ultimately culminate in bhakti yoga without any tinge of fruit of activity constitutes the highest form of religion. Everything else is simply a waste of time for the performer. So, so bhakti yoga is being stressed and Sridhar Swami and all other Acharyas, like Jiva Goswami, agree that Bhakti Yoga is not only easy, simple, natural and free from trouble, but is the only source of happiness for the human being. From the purport of text number 33 of this chapter. All right, so just to go, let's look over the different objectives which we've tried to cover here this evening. First of all, the connection between the first and second chapters. Anybody got it? Yes? From Viratru to Paramatma. Yes, from the Virata Rup to the Paramatma, right? We heard in the opening verse, we were given the example about, remember, who was it? Forgetfulness, Brahma, forgetfulness. Yes. What did he do to overcome the forgetfulness? He meditated on the Virat Rupa of the Lord. Right. So this way, Sukadeva Goswami began the chapter. All right, and then we heard in the in the chapter, the second chapter, we heard about the world of names, and we heard also the futility of the Vedas, that the Vedas are only offering heaven, heavenly pleasures and enjoyment. And Sukadeva Goswami was encouraging renunciation and depending on nature not being so much anxious to be comfortable in the material world, but just simply accepting the gifts of nature. And then we heard about going back to Godhead, and there were two ways. You could go directly, instantly, or you could go the indirect way, visiting the different heavenly planets before on the way back to Godhead. And then at the end of the chapter, we heard about the the glories of hearing, the importance of hearing. And we have to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and 
Bhagavad Gita we have to hear regularly again and again. And hearing was the most powerful of the nine processes. All right, and then explain the process of achieving the Supreme through mystic yoga, 18 to 21. Explain that process. You have to give up all material desires. And then at the time of leaving the body, you have to block all the gates. You stick your foot up your anus to stop the, the soul going out the anus. You put your foot there and you close your eyes and close your, your mouth and you want to drive the soul up to go right out the top of the head. Then the, this way the soul can leave and go to the higher, go to the spiritual world. But we have to be completely pure and have no desire for anything other than simply going back to Godhead. And the gradual ascent through the higher planets, well, like that, gradual ascent, you go up to the Sishumara, well, Sishumara region, the Milky Way, and then go through there and go from heaven, you go into the Mahaloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka, and three types of perfection. Three types of perfection. The karma is his perfection to enjoy some position in the material world, become lord of some planet, that's karmi, and then you have the, the jnani, he goes up to Brahma Loka and he waits for the end of Brahma's life and then he may go off back to Godhead at that time. And the devotee, the devotees, they can go back directly. So three kinds of per perfection. Okay, then principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a contemporary context. We had a very long discussion on that. And many of you, you all had your different ideas about how we could present Bhagavad Dharma in a contemporary context. And we do want to think about the audience, what kind of audience you want to attract, and you will present your program in that way, basis. You know, if you have your program one way, you certainly, if you have a lot of music, you'll get a, you'll get a lot of musicians, you know, a lot of people who like music coming. But you won't get the philosophers, you won't necessarily get people who want to hear philosophy, but you get people who like music. And if you have uh, put all the preaching into prasadam, you get, you get people who are good eaters, <laughs> like that. So different approaches will attract different kinds of audiences. All right, and just some concluding quotes here. We cannot discover the mysteries of the Supreme Lord by our mundane endeavors. They are only revealed by His grace to the proper devotees. These mysteries are gradually disclosed to the various devotees in proportion to the gradual development of their service attitude. His existence, Paramatma, can be realized by one who has the single qualification of submissiveness and who thereby becomes a surrendered soul. The development of submissiveness is the cause of proportionate spiritual realization by which one can ultimately meet the Supreme Lord in person, as a man meets another man face to face. Okay, that's a, this quote is from the Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. All right, so we will stop there now. We'll ask some questions. We covered this uh, third chapter. Yes, Mataji? Diksha Mataji, yes? 
Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the session today. Maharaj, I wanted to ask that, uh, like, like in the closing of the class, you were mentioning that one has to uh, close all the gates from the inner that the soul uh, rises up to the spiritual world. So, Maharaj, uh, is it that everybody has to go through this process, like even uh, even for us who are practicing sadhakas, everybody will have to go through this process or simply by just remembering Krishna will be able to? Yes. All right. No, that the people who do this, pro they're the, the mystic yogis who are practicing this bhakti mishra yoga. They're doing yoga with some devotion, but their system is mystic yoga. Now they want to leave the body by mystic process. Remember, they're going to chant Om or meditate on Om, meditate maybe on the on the super soul, and they're going to give up the body in that way. Our process, as you mentioned, is bhakti yoga, and we're depending on Krishna. Krishna delivers the devotee. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. So a devotee just simply concentrates on hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna, and Krishna will certainly respond and come and deliver that devotee. We just simply put our attention on Krishna. We don't have to worry about anything else. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Now, Prabhupada does, does give an, a, an elaborate purport on one verse there towards the end of the chapter about proving the existence of the Paramatma, the Super Soul. And he, it's a long purport there, but Basically, what Prabhupada is explaining is that everyone has some intelligence. Every living entity has some, time, some kind of intelligence. Different degrees of intelligence are there in everyone. Some people are more intelligent, some are less. Some living entities are more intelligent, some are less. We can also understand that we're not the body, that we're different from the body. By introspection and logic, we can perceive that I must be different from the body. I'm living in the body. So I'm not the body. So I, I am the seer. I am the seer. So we're, we're the seer. We see, we see the material world and we have within this body, with, with this body to see, we have different senses. But these different senses are more like mechanisms which allow us to perceive the world. Just, they're just like some kind of mechanism. The body, you, we see we have eyes, doesn't mean some sometimes people go blind people sometimes people are dumb they can't speak they but the, the, they still have the body they still they have eyes but the eyes are not able to function so it's not just simply the the mechanism but there has to be the life in the body in order for these different senses to work and there's an intelligence over that. An intelligence guides us. Now, when we make proper use of our intelligence, then we will act according to the laws of the Supreme Lord. And when we misuse our intelligence, when we just simply use intelligence for our own sense gratification, then that intelligence will become more uh, restricted. But the more we are thinking to use our intelligence for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, the greater intelligence will be bestowed on us by the grace of the Lord. 
So Prabhupada argues in this way and he ex explains that different kinds of intelligence are there. He said in the same way there is a total intelligence. Some have more intelligence, some have less. But the total intelligence, that total intelligence, where, do, where is that coming from? There's a total intelligence, which, which is not, which we don't have. We have some intelligence, like we don't have the intelligence of Lord Brahma. And we heard Lord Brahma also, sometimes he also forgets. He's also guilty sometimes. So he's intelligent, but he's not infallible. So there's, we have to understand that that intelligence indicates that there's some supreme being who is allotting that intelligence. And he's arranging for each and every one to get intelligence according to their qualification, according to how they use it, how they're going to use it. The intelligence is provided to us by some living entity who is over everything who is above everything, and he is distributing the intelligence to different people. And that intelligence is there in the form of the super soul. Mm, the super soul, from me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. So that intelligence is, is given to us, and we have this the super soul there, overseeing everything, giving us some intelligence. So it's a, there's a there, there's a super soul in everyone, and that super soul is giving different allotments of intelligence, and that super soul itself is only one partial aspect of the supreme that this, the super soul was just doing some, some fraction, he's the overseer, he's the permitter. But that doesn't make him the supreme absolute truth. The supreme absolute truth can do much more than that. And above the super soul, there's the supreme personality of Godhead. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says at the end of the 10th chapter, he said, what need is there, O Arjuna, for all of this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation. So that single fragment, that is the super soul. It's only a, a single fragment of the Supreme Lord. Above the super soul is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that's what's going to be described in the third chapter of the second canto. All right? Yes, so you... Maharaj, I wanted to ask regarding the uh, parmat size of a Paramatma is given here. So... Eight inches, right? Yes, Maharaj. So Maharaj, like for the soul, it is told in Bhagavad Gita in, in some Upanishad that it is like one-tenth of the tip of the hair. And now we are coming to know about the size of Paramatma in Bhagavatam. Right. Yeah, well, the soul is different from the Paramatma. Yes, Maharaj, both live in the same body, but soul is working under the direction of the super soul. Yes. And also, the, 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 when it says eight inches, it's not as eight inches in every body, but it's it's actually the distance between the ring finger and the thumb. So in proportion to the size of the body of the living entity, the size of the super soul will vary. It's not going to be eight inches in every living entity. As we know, the super soul is all pervading. He's, uh, he's uh, within every atom. Maharaj, one point you mentioned that Paramatma is, uh, Virat Roop is an expansion of Paramatma. Can you please elaborate on this? Well, that's how the scriptures describe it, that the, the universal form is expanded from the Paramatma, the Virat Roop. The, 
The Paramatma is, of course, the expansion of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna expands himself into everyone's heart. And it's one of his aspects. When we say, Brahmati Paramatmati Bhagavan Iti Sabjate. Learned transcendentalists call the absolute truth Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So, Paramatma is one aspect, one feature of the Bhagavan, but it's not completely Bhagavan. So, Paramatma is there, and then Paramatma expands as Brahman. You have the Brahman, which is an all pervading feature. Paramatma feature is localized in the heart of all living entities. Like the, but the Brahman is an all-pervading feature, and that Brahman is the expansion coming from the Super Soul. The, the, the Super Soul, who is, he's expanded everywhere, and then through his own potency, the Brahman energy, the spiritual energy known as Brahman manifests itself. That Virata Rup is the impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord, that is the Brahman. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All right, so no class tomorrow because it's Shivratri tomorrow. So maybe you all like to take part in Shivratri and I'm sorry I have some other, I promised some people I'd, b before I began this course I'd already arranged one program and I can't really get out of it. Anyway, we'll have class next week and we'll go on to chapter number three. Okay? So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki Jai Pancha Kantra Vashakipashandri Kapitana Bhavani Prabhupada Kipanavanama Kapitana Bhavani Prabhupada Kipanavanama